Hey guys, we are here for the last video of the year uh, for Art Joy of Sharing. Um, hopefully it's something that y'all find interesting. This month I got to pick, so of course I picked a paperclip because, you know, I've been doing them for a few months now and I'm totally hooked and addicted. I got, um, I'm going to show you how to do a shaker clip. Um, I have done one, uh, at least one before at the time of filming and I, um, I want to show you how I did it. So these are actually coin holders and for you coin collectors out there you'll recognize them my husband is a coin collector fun fact and he said i showed them to him and he goes yeah huh evidently he already knew what they were i had no idea um as far as i knew his coins are just shoved in a box somewhere so <laughs> i don't know anyway they cut i have a couple different sizes i have this big one which is i want to say it's 45 millimeters I think so. And then I have a littler one that's like 26 millimeters or something. Um, we're gonna use the bigger one. And we are going to use one of these wood rounds. These are from a um, bag of them that you can get in different shapes in the same bag at Michael's. Um, if I can find the link for it, I'll put it in the video description. This also came in the same bag. It has a few different shapes in it. And this 45 millimeter round perfectly fits this um, wood base. So we're gonna use this as our base. We have a three inch paper clip. I have a few different colors up here in case this is not the color I end up wanting. And a strip of a Tyvek envelope, um, which we are gonna to use to attach the paper clip to the back. So the first thing we need to do is cover the wood base with a piece of paper because whatever I do on the inside of the shaker part is probably the back is gonna show. So we need to find a little bit of something, something to stick on there and use as a background. Ooh, what about this music paper? That looks interesting. Now, whatever I put on the front, I usually put something similar on the back, although most of it ends up not showing, just because I don't like to leave the raw wood on the back. I am gonna use some tacky glue, and I'm gonna take my wood round, and I'm going to just put a bunch of tacky glue on there. You're gonna need tacky glue, glue and or E6000 for this project. I'm gonna put the glue face down on the paper and then I'm gonna give it a little bit of a wiggle, smush that glue around, and then grab my scissors and cut out around the edge of the round shape. You can see I've already used this paper for paper clips before. So we have that on one side. We're going to do the same thing to the back side. If we can get the lid off the glue. And we're going to do that again. Just pick a spot and smoosh it around. Okay, and then cut it out. Then I like to take a um, old gift card and I like to just push, make sure that paper is stuck down really well. Okay. And now we need to figure out what we're gonna put in the shaker part. So the first thing I usually do is cut a piece of plastic to fit the inside of the circle. Now you could of course do this by hand, but you know, we all have punches out there. And so I like to at least um, try and punch through the plastic with one of them. Now it doesn't always punch very well, um, but let me go find a punch that's the right size for this or at least close and I'll show you what I mean. This Fisker's punch might be close. I don't know what size it is. I don't know, it doesn't say. Does it? No. But let's try it and see. Now sometimes because this, of the nature of the plastic, um, it doesn't want to punch all the way through, but it leaves enough of an impression that I can usually um, finish trimming it with scissors, but we're gonna try and see what happens. Yeah. I don't think it punched all the way. Let's see. Punched part of the way. 
Let me put my reading glasses on. Uh, so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, punched part of the way, but not all the way, so. I'm fi I find that with most of your paper punches, they're intended on painting, painting, punching paper, not plastic, so they sometimes work and sometimes don't. But it's usually much easier to punch it with um, one of them than it is to try to cut it by hand. Now this might be big. Yeah, so we're gonna trim it smaller. It doesn't have to be perfect, that's why we're using clear plastic. But I do want it sort of round. And just keep trimming it until it fits. Oops. I didn't mean to throw that. I really didn't. That fits. Okay. So now we have our little piece of plastic. Clean some of this mess up off the table. Now I like to put words inside my shakers. You could put an image in the background, but I like to put a word. So the next thing we're going to do is push all this aside. We're going to look for a word. Now I want a word or phrases that will fit inside here without too much trouble. <clears throat> and be able to be seen through the background, but they don't necessarily have to be huge. Uh, let's try, I do try, also try to like match a, the color of the background. So for instance, this is like an off-white music paper, so I would probably use off-white stickers rather than black or white or some other color. Um, and you, I have a lot of digital downloads of stickers in my Etsy shop, so you could definitely use those. I actually need to print more of my own downloads because I've used almost all of them up. Um, I also have lots of these other stickers, so. I like this one, and I usually just go with my first instinct. This says, be brave, comma, be bold. So I am going to need to cut it in half. So it fits on our piece of plastic. Um, I will be adding a little bit of tacky glue to the back of the sticker to ensure that it stays and doesn't at some point come off. And then the be bold, same thing. Okay, and then at some point, um, you probably want to have handy a Q-tip. <clears throat> I want to get some of this excess glue off. So I like to use a Q-tip or something, cotton, some kind of cotton swab. to get all of the excess glue off, or at least most of it. Okay, so then the Be Brave and Be Bold fits right inside there. And then what do you fill it with to make it a shaker? Well, you could fill it with anything. You could fill it with, it doesn't fit completely flat, so hang on. You could fill it with just about anything, uh, glitter, seed beads, um, flower seeds, um, tea leaves, that's better. 
So we are going to find some things to put in there and I'm gonna go on a hunt because I have a couple of different things in mind. I'll be right back. I have lots of these around. These are nail art glitters from the Dollar Tree. They come in uh, sets of colors and they are great for projects like this. Um, there's not a lot of it, but it's uh, really small, tiny little glitters and um, small, tiny shapes. And they are great for shaker cards. And, and there's even usually some like small, oops, where are we? Micro beads. So I picked a few colors of those out. And I actually have some, remember I said dried tea? I have some dried tea. So the first thing we're going to do is um, put some glue around the edge of this base, a little bit of glue, and glue it to our wood round. So we're going to need to get our E6000 open, which is generally a challenge for me because there's a lot of glue on the lid. I need to get some pliers. Hang on a second for you guys, but it was a few minutes for me. I couldn't find my um, big pliers. Okay, so we're going to just carefully hopefully without making too big a mess, put some of the E6000 glue around the edge of the coin holder. Uh, why E6000? Because it is made for gluing non-porous surfaces together. And it'll work good for this. I'm gonna try to wipe off the excess. And stick that down. I need a baby wipe. Okay. And I'm going to just take the baby wipe around the edge and try to get some of the excess glue off. That works. Okay. Then we're going to put our Be Brave and Be Bold in there. I'll zoom in just a little bit. There we go. And then we are going to pour in a few of each of these things. I picked out a few colors, uh, orangey, coppery colors, and some of these little gold micro beads, and some little silver stars. I think we're going to change the paper clip out to a silver one. And as I said, I've got the dry tea out, and we'll see if I want to add it or not. But I do have some. And some yellow. Some of this pretty, it's a pretty coppery color. Let's see. There we go. Doesn't want to focus. All right. Here's a tip, don't do that unless the lid's on. <laughs> okay. I like the idea of putting something unusual in there that people will go, what is that? So I do think I want to put a little bit of the tea in. This is an old washed out spice jar that I put the dry tea in after I dried it and I put the shaker lid back on so I don't get too much. I'll just give it a dark there we go. Again, like with the glitter, any little bits that didn't make it in, I pick it up with my finger and put it in. Okay, now to glue the to put the lid on, we're gonna use some more of that E6000, and I'm going to. There's a couple different ways you can do it. I found the easier way is to do this and put some E6000 in a few spots around the edge. You could use super glue, but if I did that, I can guarantee you that I would probably end up gluing my fingers to the paper clip. So I don't usually do that. All right, I'm gonna put the lid on. Push down. 
Again, take our baby wipe, remove any excess glue. Now you could do this and it could just be an embellishment. It could be on the front of a card. We're gonna, of course, make it, like I said, a paper clip. I'm gonna put that lid back on our E6000 because I think I, it's bad enough over here. I don't know how a person can like mess up their glue more than I have. Hi, yi, yi. Okay. So now we're gonna put our paper clip on and to do this, you can of course use more E6000 or I just use usually use tacky glue. So the first thing I do is take my strip of Tyvek and well, I use Tyvek because it's stronger than regular paper. So, so Tyvek envelope and I put it between the layers of paper clip and put it to about like halfway like that. This is the part that's gonna be glued to the shaker this is the part where you would slide it onto a page or a journal cover. So this is the part that you want to glue. You want the little bit out. And we are going to put a bunch of glue on this. Like this. I'm going to center it on my clip. Sometimes I use a smaller clip or a bigger clip. Sometimes I hang charms off the top or the bottom. Um, it just depends. Now I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to push that little bit down into the Tyvek so that the center Tyvek has good contact. Then I'm going to push like this until that Tyvek is touching the wood base. I will usually move it over a little bit, make sure it's in the middle. Okay, and then I will grab some clips that are big enough and put them like this to hold them down while everything dries. I got glue on the front of my shaker, don't do that. Don't be me. Be better than me. Okay, let's see. And just do that and push it as far in as it will go. And this will be sort of a clamp that'll hold your tie back down while everything dries. Um, you don't necessarily need to leave it dry a whole long time. Um, it's crooked. There we go. but you need to leave it dry long enough for that tacky glue to dry. The E6000 will take a while to dry overnight, potentially, um, but you want to leave your clamps on there until at least the tacky glue is dry. I usually leave things on there long enough until the tacky glue is dry, then I take a few pictures, and then I put the clamps back on and leave it overnight, and then I call it done. You can clean up the edges later um, with a razor blade or your fingernail, generally, if you get glue somewhere where you don't need it to be, like right here. Okay, and once I get it to where the tacky glue is kind of sticking well, I come in like this and I trim off the extra Tyvek. This is when I look and make sure that there is nothing that needs to be cleaned or changed. I give it a, a decent once over.
Okay, and then put the clamps back on. Shaker paper clip. There you have it. I hope it's something that you find enjoyable and that you enjoy doing. <coughs> what strange small art parts do you have in your art room, in your collection, that you can use in new, different, and unique ways? For me, that's what the paper clips are all about and the tags when I do art tags. So look around, try to get a new perspective on the stuff in your collection, especially for the coming year, and see what new, different, and unique ways you can use it and incorporate it into your art. If you have something new that you think we'd all be interested in, uh, whether it's a video or something that you've did, a picture, please share it over on our Joy of Sharing. We would love to see what you're doing. Um, if you're not a member of the group and you'd like to be, the link for it is in the description below. If you wanna follow me on social media, see what paper clips or other um, interesting art things, strange art things I'm up to on a daily basis. Support the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups um, or any one of a number of thing places that you can find me. Click on my link tree list of links which is in the video's description along with my happy mail and a bunch of other stuff, so check it out. Um, that's it for today. I hope that you found that interesting and that, that give you some ideas. And above all, go out and have a great day, have a happy holiday, and um, do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.